Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures. This is Steve. Right now I'm on Route 66 in Kingman, Arizona, where we have a train going by, cars going by on the road. Hopefully you can hear me. But today we're gonna to be traveling west of here to what was once one of the most dangerous portions of Route 66, Sit Greaves Pass, where we're gonna take a look at the hidden Schaefer Fishbowl Springs. So let's get in the car and get away from this noisy train and get out on Route 66. We are starting today at the Kingman Route 66 Visitor Center, which is a great place to start or end any Route 66 trip. There's a pretty good Route 66 museum here, but since we're filming this on a Saturday of a holiday weekend, I want to hit the road before it gets too crowded. Today we're going to be traveling the part of Route 66 between Kingman and Oatman, the portion that includes Sitgreaves Pass. I had mentioned Sitgreaves Pass being considered one of the most treacherous parts of Route 66, but Sitgreaves Pass actually predates Route 66 by decades, dating back to the 1850s. The road goes through the Black Mountains and was originally built as a wagon road by Edward Fitzgerald Beale following old Native American trails. He named the pass John Howell's Pass in 1857 for one of the men in his expedition. Word must not have gotten out about the name though, because less than a year later, Lieutenant Joseph Christmas Ives of the Corps of Topographical Engineers named it Sitgreaves Pass for Captain Lorenzo Sitgreaves, who led an expedition down the Colorado and Zuni Rivers in 1851. While the pass was an important early route to get to and from California, by the late 1860s, people could take the railroad west, so the road saw a lot less use. By the time of the early automobiles, most traffic went to the south, largely where Interstate 40 is now. However, when Route 66 was designated in 1926, thanks to some politicking by business owners in Oatman, it was routed through Sitgreaves Pass instead of the easier road to the south. We haven't made it to the mountains yet, but we've come across this rest stop. I think I'll hold it. This is actually a pretty well-known photo stop. So do we dare look in? There's a pretty good chance that this could go badly. We got lucky today. In the early 1930s, a man named James Walker moved with his family from Indiana to live in Arizona and settled here at Cool Springs. Walker built eight sleeping cabins and ran the gas station and store. His wife did all the cooking and his kids helped run things as well. A few years later, Walker took off, leaving the station with Mrs. Walker. Mrs. Walker would end up getting remarried to a man named Floyd Spadell, and business here was pretty good from World War II to the early 1950s. But this part of Route 66 would get bypassed in 1952 by that road to the south that would become Interstate 40, and business dried up. Maybe taking a cue from her first husband, Mrs. Walker left Spadell, leaving him with Cool Springs. Then in the 1960s, a fire burned the station to the ground and Cool Springs was no more. It was briefly rebuilt in 1991 for the movie Universal Soldier starring John claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren, but they blew it up again in the movie. In 2001, Ned Luchner purchased the property and began restoring it, and in 2004, the lights were turned on again here for the first time since 1966. We are passing by Ed's Camp now, named for Ed Edgerton. It's private property, so we can't really stop, but this was a roadside camp where people could pitch a tent or sleep in their cars dating back to the early 1920s. 
The camp eventually included a grocery store and a souvenir store. And it's past Ed's camp where the road starts to get steep and you really start to hit the curves. This was actually the steepest part of the entire Route 66. The grade gets as steep as 12% on some parts of the road. Because some early car engines were gravity fed, if their gas tanks weren't full enough, they couldn't actually make it up the hill. I've heard that some drivers solved that by driving up the hill in reverse. This is kind of a blink and you'll miss it spot on the road. The Schaefer Fishbowl Spring. Here's the concrete kind of keeping the side of the mountain in place. But let's go ahead and head up the stairs. This place is more well known now than it used to be, but I think most people who pass by still have no idea this is here. There are no signs for it at all, and the stairs do a pretty good job of blending in with the surroundings. Supposedly, the story goes that when the WPA was working on the road in the 1930s, a man named Schaefer had this built, turning a natural spring into a place that water could be collected. But it's hard to find any historical info on it prior to the 1980s, and no one seems to know anything about who Schaefer was. But here is the Schaefer Fishbowl Spring, and you can see why it's called a fishbowl. Locals help keep the spring stocked with goldfish, and the fish I guess help eat the algae, keeping the water cleaner for area wildlife like burrows and sheep. And there are quite a few goldfish in there today. Here's a look back at the way we've come. It doesn't look that steep now, but in the 1920s, this was brutal, especially in the summer. The road is still fairly steep, but we're actually not far from the summit now. And we've made it to the summit of Sitgreaves Pass, elevation 3,550 feet. Because of the way the road is cut, the view from here isn't the best, but there's actually a great viewpoint about a quarter mile to the west that we'll stop at in just a minute. A long time ago, there used to be a service station here at the summit, but it's long gone. You can still see a few remnants of it though. Okay, so we're at the viewpoint near the summit, and over the years this place has been turned into sort of a makeshift memorial. It kind of looks like a graveyard, but no one is actually buried here. <laughs> At least I hope not. Ashes being scattered up here is pretty common though. Most of the memorials are pretty simple, but there are a few that are pretty elaborate. I'm pretty sure we just walked past an urn too. And there's Route 66 heading downhill towards Oakman. There are maybe hundreds of these memorials, but I can see why people would want their ashes scattered here. The view from up here is great, and you can see three states, Arizona, California, and Nevada. In the book Grapes of Wrath, after traveling through here and reaching the Colorado River, Pa Joad looked back and said that these mountains look like the bones of a country. Well, if he came through today, maybe he would say the ashes instead. Unfortunately for those early road travelers, 
going down Sitgreaves Pass to the west was just as bad because it was still steep and still had more hairpin turns to come. Coming down the western side of Sitgraves Pass, there are a few ruins here and there. This is what remains of the town of Gold Road. Gold was found in the area in 1899, and a town sprung up here. It was a company town for the mine, and when the mine closed in 1942, the town died soon after. I had to stop at this hairpin turn. There's an old postcard and the photo in it is taken from pretty much this exact same spot. Here are our first burrows of the day. I've never driven this road and not come across some. Normally you could find a number of them hanging out in Oatman waiting to be fed, but I have a feeling that it might be a little too crowded for them there today. It looks like we've arrived at rush hour. I'm not sure where everyone came from. There wasn't even this many people on the road. So we've made it to Oatman, but that's another video for another time when it isn't a holiday weekend. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.